Okay, Karch, Chapter 9, Antibiotics. Uh, chemotherapeutic agents. Glossary of key terms. Aerobic. Bacteria that depend on oxygen for survival. Anaerobic. Bacteria that survive without oxygen, which are often seen when blood flow is cut off to an area of the body. Antibiotic. Chemical that is able to inhibit the growth of specific bacteria and cause the death of susceptible bacteria. Gram-negative. Gram negative. Bacteria that accept a negative s stain and are frequently associated with infectious infections of the genitourinary gentino, genitourinary or GI tract. Hate that word. Gram positive. Bacteria that take a positive stain and are frequently associated with infections of the respiratory tract and soft tissues. Synergistic. Drugs that work together to increase drug effectiveness. Okay. Many new bacteria appear each year and researchers are challenged to develop new antibiotics. Chemicals that inhibit specific bacteria to deal with each new threat or antibiotics, chemicals that inhibit specific bacteria to deal with each new threat. Antibiotics are made in three ways. By living microorganisms, by synthetic manufacture, and in some cases through genetic engineering. Antibiotics may either be bacteriostatic, meaning preventing the growth of bacteria, or bactericidal killing bacteria directly. Although several antibiotics are both bactericidal and bacteriostatic depending on the concentration of the particular drug. This chapter discusses the major classes of antibiotics, aminoglycosides, carbon carbapenems, cephalosporins, fluo fluorokinolones, <laughs> fluo Fluorokinolones, okay, and penicillins and penicillinase resistant drugs, Sulfon sulfonamides, tetracyclines, and the disease specific antimyobacterials, including the anti tubular and lepros leprostatic drugs, antibiotics that do not fit into the large antibiotic classes include ketolides, linosamides, macrolides, and monobactams. Figure 9.1, 9.2 shows sites of cellular action of these cl classes of antibiotics. Many antibiotics used to treat childhood infections such as otitis, media, and other upper respiratory infections, or URIs, come in an oral suspension suitable for children. The order for these solutions is usually written in teaspoons for the convenience of the parent who will be dispensing the medication. It is very important to make sure that the parent understands that the teaspoon in the prescription refers to a measuring teaspoon. 5 mLs. Inadvertent overdoses have been reported when parents used a flatware teaspoon to measure out the child's dose. Flatware teaspoons vary greatly in volume. If a parent calls to report that the medicine is all gone on day 4 and it was supposed to be given for 7 days, check to see how the medication is being measured. Teaching the pa parent when the drug is first ordered can prevent problems during the course of treatment. Bacteria and antibiotics. Bacteria can invade the human body through many routes. For example, respiratory, gastrointestinal, and skin. Once the bacteria invade the body, the human immune res response is activated, and signs and symptoms of an infection occur as the body tries to rid itself of the foreign cells. Fever, lethargy, slow-wave sleep induction, and Classic signs of inflammation, e.g. redness, swelling, 
heat, and pain all indicate that the body is responding to an invader. The body becomes the host for the bacteria and supplies proteins and enzymes for the bacteria. Uh, proteins and enzymes the bacteria or the bacteria need for reproduction. Unchallenged, the invading bacteria can multiply and send out other bacteria to further invade tissue. The goal of antibiotic therapy is to decrease the population of invading bacteria to a point at which the human immune system can effectively deal with the invader. To determine which antibiotic will effectively interfere with the specific proteins or enzymes systems for treatment of a specific infection, the causative organism must be identified through a culture. Sensitivity testing is also done to determine the antibiotic to which that particular organism is most sensitive, e.g. which antibiotic best kills or controls the bacteria. Gram-positive bacteria are those whose cell walls retain, retains a stain known as Gram's stain or resistant decolorization with alcohol during culture and sensitivity testing. Gram-positive bacteria are commonly associated with infections of the respiratory tract and soft tissues. An example of a gram-positive bacterium is Streptococcus pneumoniae, pneumon a common cause of pneumonia. In contrast, gram-negative bacteria are those whose cell walls lose a stain or are decolorized by alcohol. These bacteria are frequently associated with infections of the genitourinary or GI tract. An example of a gram-negative bacterium is Escher Escher Escherichia coli, a common cause, and it's E. coli, a common cause of cystitis. Aerobic bacteria depend on oxygen for survival, whereas anaerobic bacteria, e.g., those bacteria associated with gangrene, do not use oxygen. All right. If culture and sensitivity testing is not possible, either because the source of infection is not identifiable or because the patient is too sick to wait for test results to determine the best treatment, clinicians attempt to administer a drug with a broad spectrum of activity against gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria or against anaerobic bacteria. Antibiotics that interfere with the biochemical reaction common to many organisms are known as broad-spectrum antibiotics. These drugs are often given at the beginning of treatment until the exact organism and sensitivity can be established. Because the antibiotics have such a wide range of effects, they are frequently associated with adverse effects. Human cells have many of the same pr properties as bacterial cells and can be affected in much the same way so damage may occur to the human cells as well as to the bacterial cells. Because there is no perfect antibiotic that is without effect on the human host, clinicians try to select an antibiotic with selective toxicity or the ability to strike foreign cells with little or no effect on human cells. Certain antibiotic and antibiotics may be contraindicated in some patients because of known adverse effects. This includes those patients who are immunocompromised, who have severe GI disease, or who are debilitated. See Box 91 for effects of antibiotics across the lifespan. The antibiotic of choice is one that affects the cause, causative organism and leads to the fewest adverse effects for the patient involved. In some cases, antibiotics are given in combination because they are synergistic, meaning their combined effect is greater than their effect the, their effect if they are given individually, Box 9-2. Use of synergistic antibiotics also allows the patient to take a lower dose of each antibiotic to achieve the desired effect, which helps to reduce the adverse effects that a particular drug may have. In some situations, antibiotics, antibiotics are used as a means of prophylaxis or prevention of potential infection. 
patients who will soon be in a situation that commonly results in a specific one moment infection e.g. patients undergoing GI surgical procedures which may introduce GI bacteria into the bloodstream or peritoneum may be given antibiotics before they are exposed to the bacteria. Usually a large one-time dose of an antibiotic is given to destroy any bacteria that enter the host immediately and thereby prevent a serious infection. Okay, I'm going to read chapter or box 91 drug therapy across the lifespan. Antibiotics. Children. Children are very sensitive to the gastrointestinal intestinal and CNS effects of most antibiotics, and more severe reactions can be expected when these drugs are used in children. It is important to monitor the hydration and nutritional status of children who are adversely affected by drug-induced diarrhea, anorexia, nausea, and vomiting. Super infections can be a problem f for small children as well. For example, thrush, oral candidiasis, is a common superinfection that makes eating and drinking difficult. Many antibiotics do not have proven safety and efficacy in pediatric use. The extreme caution an extreme caution should be used when giving them to children. The fluoroquinolones, for instance, are associated with damage to developing cartilage and are not recommended for growing children. Pediatric doses of antibiotics should be double-checked to make sure that the child is receiving the correct dose, thereby improving the chance of eradicating the infection and decreasing the risk of adverse effects. Antibiotic treatment of ear infections, a common pediatric problem, is controversial. Ongoing research suggests that judicious use of decongestants and anti-inflammatories may be just as successful as the use of antibiotics without the risk of development of res resistant bacterial strains. Parents not wanting to see their children sick may demand antibiotics as a cure-all whenever their children is fussy or feverish. Parent education is very important in helping to cut down the unnecessary use of antibiotics in children. Adults. Many adults believe that antibiotics are a cure-all for any discomfort and fever. It is very important to explain that antibiotics are useful against only specific bacteria and actually can cause problems when used unnecessarily for viral infections, such as the common cold. Adults need to be cautioned to take the entire course of the medication as prescribed and not to store unused pills for future infection or share antibiotics with symptomatic friends. Pregnant and breastfeeding women should not take antibiotics unless the benefit clearly outweighs the potential risk to the fetus or neonate. Tetracyclines, for example, are associated with pitting of enamel and developing teeth with calcium deposits in growing bones. These drugs could cause serious problems for neonates. Women of childbearing age should be advised. One moment. Women of childbearing age should be advised to use barrier contraceptives if any of these drugs are used. Many antibiotics interfere with the effectiveness of oral contraceptives, and unplanned pregnancies can occur. Older adults. Clavu. In many instances, older adults do not present with the same signs and symptoms of infection as other pa patients. Therefore, assessing the problem and obtaining appropriate specimens for culture is especially important with this population. Older patients may be more susceptible to the adverse effects associated with antibiotic therapy. Their hydration and nutritional status should be monitored closely as should the need for safety precautions if CNS effects occur. If hepatic or renal dysfunction is expected, particularly in very old patients, those who may depend on alcohol and those who are taking other hep hepatotoxic or nephrotic drugs, nephrotoxic, nephrotoxic drugs, the dose may need to be lowered and the patient should be monitored more frequently. Elderly patients also need to be cautioned to complete the full course of drug therapy, even when they feel better and not to save pills for medication <laughs> at a future time.
bacteria and, and resistance to antibiotics. Bacteria have survived for hundreds of years because they can adapt to their environment. They do this by altering their cell wall or enzyme systems to become resistant to, e.g. protect themselves from, unfavorable conditions or situations. Many species of bacteria have developed resistance to certain antibiotics. For example, bacteria that were once very sensitive to penicillin have developed an enzyme called penicillinase, which effecti effectively inactivates many of the penicillin-type drugs. New drugs had to be developed to effectively treat infections involving these once-controlled bacteria. It is very important to use these drugs only when the identity and sensitivity of the offending bacterium have been established. Indiscriminate use of these new drugs can lead to the development of more resistant strains for which there is no effective antibiotic. See later discussion of new antibiotics for additional information on Synersid and Linezolid. The longer an antibiotic has been in use, the greater is the chance that the bacteria will develop into a resistant strain. Efforts to control, control the emergence of resistant strains involve intensive educational programs that advocate the use of antibiotics only when necessary and effective and not for, and not for the treatment of viral infections such as the common cold, Box 9-3. Using antibiotics properly, says Box 93, the evidence. In 2003, the Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention joined efforts to educate the public and health care providers about the dangers of inappropriate use of antibiotics. The ev evidence-based practice guidelines combine data from many studies to outline the most effic efficacious use of antibiotics. To review some of the studies, review the references listed in the bibliography and references section. Nurses should include some of the following points about the risks and dangers of antibiotic abuse in the patient education plan. Explain clearly that a particular antibiotic is effective against only certain bacteria and that a culture needs to be taken to identify the bacteria. Explain that bacteria can develop resistant strains that will not be affected by, antibi affected by antibiotics in the future, so use, use of antibiotics now may make them less effective in situations in which they are really necessary. Ensure that patients understand the importance of taking the full course of medication as prescribed, even if they feel better. Stopping an antibiotic midway through a regimen often leads to, to the development of resistant bacteria. Using all the med medication will also prevent patients infection uh, patients saving unused medication to self-treat future infections or to share with other family members. Tell patients that allergies may develop with repeated exposures to certain antibiotics. In addition, explain to patients that saving antibiotics to take later when they think they need them again may lead to earlier development of an allergy, which will negate important tests that could identify the bacteria making them sick. Offer other medications, such as antihistamines, decongestants, or even chicken soup to patients who request antibiotics. This may satisfy their need for something to take. Explaining that viral infections do not respond to antibiotics usually offers little consolation to patients who are suffering from a cold or the flu. The publicity that many emergent resistant strains of bacteria have received in recent years may help to get the message across to patients about the need to take the full course of antibiotics and to use antibiotics only when they are appropriate. To view the educational program developed by the FDA and the CDC for use with patients and the data behind these efforts, go to www.cdc.gov drug resistant slash community whatever. Mm -hmm. In addition to the use of in addition, the use of antibiotics may result in the development of superinfections or overgrowth of resistant pathogens such as bacteria, fungi, or yeasts. Because antibiotics, particularly broad spectrum agents, destroy bacteria in the flora that normally work to keep these opportunistic invaders in check. When normal bacteria are destroyed or greatly reduced in number, there is nothing to prevent the invaders from occupying the host. 
In most cases, the superinfection is an irritating adverse effect, e.g. vaginal yeast infection, candi candi candidias, candiasis, can candy, whatever, diarrhea. But in some cases, the superinfection can be more severe than the infection that was originally being treated. Treatment of the superinfection leads to new adverse effects and the potential for different superinfection. A vicious cycle of treatment and resistant and resistance is the result. Key points. The goal of antibiotic therapy is to reduce the population of invading bacteria to a size that the human immune response can deal with. Bacteria can be classified as gram-positive, frequently found in respiratory infections, or gram-negative, frequently found in GI and GU infections. They can also be classified as anaerobic, not needing oxygen, or aerobic, dependent on oxygen. Culture and sensitivity testing ensures that the correct antibiotic is chosen for each infection, a practice that may help to decrease the number of emerging resistant strain bacteria. The aminoglycosides, table 9-1, are a group of powerful antibiotics used to treat serious infection caused by gram-negative aerobic bacilli. Because most of these drugs have potentially serious adverse effects, newer, less toxic drugs have replaced aminoglycosides in the treatment of less serious infections. Aminoglycosides include amicacin or amicin, gentamicin or Garamycin, conomycin or cantrex, neomycin or misophradin, streptomycin, generic, and tobramum, tobramycin or tobi or tobrex. Therapeutic actions and indications. The aminoglycosides are bacterial. They inhibit, or I'm sorry, bacterial cytal. They inhibit protein synthesis in susceptible strains of gram-negative bacteria. They irreversibly bind to a unit of the bacteria ribosomes, leading to misreading of the genetic code and cell death. Figure 9-1. These drugs are used to treat serious infections caused by susceptible strains of gram-negative bacteria, including Pseudomonas aeruginosa, E. coli, Proteus species, the Klebsiella enterobacter seracea group, Citrobacter species, and Staphylococcus species such as S. aureus. aureus. Aminoglycosides are indicated for the treatment of serious infections that are susceptible to penicillin when penicillin is contraindicated and they can be used in several infections before culture and sensitivity tests have been completed see table 91 for usual indications for these drugs okay table 91 drugs in focus amicacin or amicin dosage 15 milligrams Per kilogram a day, IM or IV divided into two or three equal doses, reduce dose in renal failure. Usual indications, treatment of serious gram-negative infections. Gentamicin or garamicin, adult, three milligrams per kilogram per day, IM or IV in three equal doses, QAH, reduce dose in renal failure, pediatric 2 to 2.5 milligram per kilogram a day Q8H IV or IM sensitive to streptomycin uh, no less toxic drugs can be used uh, short-term IV or IM treatment of serious infection ocular infections caused by susceptible bacteria nebulizer management of cystic fibrosis and pseudomonas aeruginosa infections um, the other ones on here for aminoglycosides, I'm just going to read them off. Um, canamycin, cantrex, neomycin, 
um, Misa Fradel Dro Frater Frater Fratery Fraterel Fraterel Streptof Streptomycin Generic and Tobramycin Nepsin or Tobri Tobrix Pharmacokinetics. The amino glycosides are poorly absorbed from the GI tract but rapidly absorbed after intramuscular injection. Reaching peak levels within one hour, these drugs have an average half-life of, of two to three hours. They are widely distributed throughout the body, cross the placenta, and enter breast milk, and are excreted unchanged in the urine. See contraindications and cautions. Amicacin is available for short-term IM or intravenous use. Gentamicin is available in many forms, Opth ophthalmic, ophth ophthalmic, topical, IV, intrathecal, impregnated beads on surgical wire, and liposomal injection. Canamycin is available in parenteral, uh, is in, in parenteral, parenteral and oral forms. Niomycin is available in topical and oral forms. Streptomycin is only available in I, for IM use. Streptomycin, only IM. Tobramycin is used for short-term IM or IV treatment and is also available in an ophthalmic form and as a nebulizer solution. Contraindications and cautions. Aminoglycosides are contraindicated in the following conditions. Known allergy to any aminoglycosides, renal or hepatic disease that could be exasperated by toxic aminoglycoside effects and that could interfere with drug metabolism and excretion, leading to higher toxicity. Pre-existing hearing loss, which could be intensified by toxic drug effects on the auditory nerve. Active infection with herpes or myobacterial infections that could be worsened by the effects of an aminoglycoside on normal defense mechanisms. Myasthenia, myasthenia gravis, gravis, or Parkinson, so Parkinsonism, which often are exacerbated by the effects of a particular aminoglycoside on the nervous system, and lactation because aminoglycosides are excreted in breast milk and potentially could cause serious effects in the infant. Caution is necessary when these agents are administered during pregnancy because aminoglycosides are used to treat only severe infections and the benefits of the drug must be carefully weighed against the potential adverse effects on the fetus. It is necessary to test urine function frequently when these drugs are used because they depend on the kidney for excretion and are toxic to the kidney. The potential for ne nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity with am amicacin is very high, so the drug is used only as long as absolutely necessary. Do not use canomycin for longer than 7 to 10 days because of its potential toxic effects, which include renal damage, bone marrow depression, and GI complications. Streptomycin, once a commonly used drug, is reserved for use in special situations because it is very toxic to the 8th cranial nerve and kidney. It can be used in severe infections if the organism has been shown to be sensitive to streptomycin and no less no less toxic drugs can be used. Adverse effects. The many serious adverse effects associated with aminoglycosides limit their usefulness. The drugs come with a black box warning alerting healthcare professionals to the serious risk of autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Central nervous system effects include autotoxicity, possibly leading to irreversible deafness, vestibular paralysis resulting from drug effects on the auditory nerve, confusion, depression, disorientation, and numbness, tingling, and weakness related to drug effects on other nerves. Renal toxicity, which may progress to renal failure, is caused by direct drug toxicity in the glomerulus, meaning that the drug molecules cause damage, e.g. obstruction, directly to the kidney. Bone marrow depression may result from direct drug effects on the rapidly dividing cells in the bone marrow, leading, for example...
Bone marrow depression may result from direct drug effects on the rapidly dividing cells in the bone marrow, leading, for example, to immune suppression and resultant superinfections. GI effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, stomatitis, and hepatic toxicity. These effects are a result of direct GI irritation, loss of bacteria of the normal flora with resultant superinfection and toxic effects in the mucous membrane and liver as the drug is metabolized. Cardiac effects can include palpitations, hypotension, and hypertension. Hypersensitivity reactions include purpura, rash, uticaria, and exfoliative dermatitis. Clinical Important Drug-to-Drug -drug Interactions Most aminoglycosides have a synergistic bactericidal effect when given with penicillins, cephalosporins, carbon carbonicillin, or ticercillin. In certain conditions, this synergism is used therapeutically to increase the effectiveness of treatment. Avoid combining aminoglycosides with potent diuretics. This increases the in in incidences of autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, and neurotoxicity. If these antibiotics are given with an anesthetics, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, succinicholine, or citrate anticoagulated blood, increased neuromuscular blockade with paralysis is possible. If a patient who has been receiving an aminoglycoside re requires surgery, indicate prominently on the patient's chart the fact that the aminoglycoside has been given. Provide extended monitoring and support after surgery. Nursing considerations for patients receiving aminoglycosides. Assessment history and examination. Assess for possible contraindications or cautions. Known allergy to any aminoglycoside. Obtain specific information about the nature and occurrence of allergic reactions. History of renal or hepatic disease. Pre-existing hearing loss. Active infection with herpes, vaccinia, uh, varicella, or fungal or myobacterial organisms. Myoasthenia, gravis, Parkinsonism, infant botulism, and current pregnancy or lactation status. Perform a physical assessment to establish baseline data for assessing the effectiveness of the drug and the occurrence of any adverse effects associated with drug therapy. Perform culture and sensitivity tests at the site of infection. Conduct orientation and reflex assessment, as well as auditory testing to evaluate any CNS effect of the drug. Assess vital signs, respiratory rate, and adventitious sounds to monitor for sounds of infection or hypersensitivity reactions. Temperature to assess for signs and symptoms of infection. Blood pressure to monitor for cardiovascular effects of the drug. Perform renal and hepatic function tests to determine baseline function of these organs and possibly the need to adjust dose. Nursing diagnosis. Nursing diagnosis related to drug therapy might include the following. Acute pain related to GI or CNS effects of drug. Disturbed sensory perception auditory related to CNS effects of drug. Risk for infection related to bone marrow suppression. Excess fluid volume related to nephrotoxicity. Deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Implementation with rationale. Check culture and sensitivity reports to ensure that this is the drug of choice for this patient. Ensure that the patient receives a full course of aminoglycosides as prescribed, divided around the clock, to increase the effectiveness and decrease the risk of, for development of resistant strains of bacteria. Monitor the infection, sight, and presenting signs and symptoms, e.g. fever, lethargy. Throughout the course of the drug therapy, failure of these signs and symptoms to resolve may indicate the need to reculture the site. Arrange to continue drug therapy for at least two days after all signs and symptoms resolve to decrease the development of resistant strains of bacteria. Monitor patient regularly, regularly for signs of nephrotoxicity, ne neurotoxicity, and bone marrow suppression to effectively arrange for discontinuation of drug decreased dose or appropriate if any of these toxicities occurs. Provide safety measures for to protect the patient if CNS effects such as confusion, disorientation, or numbness and tingling occur. Provide small 
frequent meals as tolerated, frequent mouth care, and ice chips of sugarless candy to suck if stomatitis and sore mouth are problems to relieve discomfort. Provide adequate fluids to replace fluid lost with diarrhea. Ensure that patient is hydrated at all times during drug therapy to minimize renal toxicity from drug exposure. Instruct the patient about the appropriate dosage regimen and possible adverse effects to enhance patient knowledge about drug therapy and to promote compliance. Provide the following patient teaching. Take safety precautions, such as changing position slowly and avoid driving in hazardous tests if CNS effects occur. Try to drink a lot of fluids and to maintain nutrition, very important, even though nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may occur. Avoid exposure to other infections, e.g. crowded areas, people with known infectious diseases. Report difficulty breathing, severe headache, loss of hearing, or ringing in ears, or changes in urine output. Evaluation Monitor patient response to the drug, resolution of bacterial infection, monitor for adverse effects, orientation and affect, hearing changes, bone marrow suppression, renal toxicity, hepatic dysfunction, GI effects. Evaluate effectiveness of the teaching plan. Patient can name drug, dosage, possible adverse effects to watch for, and specific measures to help avoid adverse effects. Monitor effectiveness of comfort and safety measures and compliance with the therapeutic regimen. Key points. Aminoglycosides inhibit protein synthesis in susceptible strains of gram-negative bacteria. These drugs are reserved for the use in, of, in serious infections because of the potential serious adverse effects. Monitor for autotoxicity, renal toxicity, GI dis disturbance, bone marrow depression, and superinfections. Okay, on to carbapenems. The carbapenem, table 9-2, are a relatively new clan of broad-spectrum antibiotics, effective against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Meropenem, mer meropenem, the first drug of the class, was discussed in Chapter 8 and has limited use because of the severe risk for potential fatal GI toxicities. Newer carbapenems are not as toxic. Carbapenems discussed here include Dorapenem or Dorabax, Dorabax, Ertapenem or Invons, and Imapenem, Silastin or Primaxin. Therapeutic actions and indications: the carbapenems are bacteriocidal. They inhibit cell membrane synthesis in susceptible bacteria, leading to cell death, figure 9-2. These drugs are used to treat serious infections caused by susceptible strains of Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Moraxella catarhalis, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, 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 uh, ex E. coli, Peptostreptococcus, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Clostridium, Clostridifor Clostridiforme, that's C. diff, um, Eubacterium, Lentum, Bacteroides, Fragilis, Bacteroides disinsonis, Bacteroides ovatus, Bacteroides theta otomicron, Bacteroides uniformitis, Proteus mirabilis, Pseudomonas, about a thousand more, screw it, and some susceptible bacteria, and, and other susceptible bacteria. Okay. Everything. They are indicated for treating serious intra-abdominal, urinary tract, skin and skin structure, bone and joint, and gynecological infections. More on the skin ones and STDs. See Table 9-2 for usual indications for each of these drugs. 
Pharmacokinetics. These drugs are rapidly absorbed if given IM and reach peak levels at the end of the infusion if given IV. They are widely distributed throughout the body, although it is n not known whether they cross the placenta or enter breast milk. See contraindications and cautions. Carbapenems are excreted unchanged in the urine and have an average half-life of 1 to 4 hours. Dorapenem is the newest drug of the class. It is given IV every 8 hours by 1 hour IV infusion for 5 to 14 days. Erdipenem can be given IM or IV. It is given once a day for 5 to 14 days depending on the infection. Imipenem celastin is a combination of imipenem which interferes with cell wall synthesis. and causes bacterial cell one moment. death and celestin which inactivates the imipenem and leads to increased urinary excretion of the drug and decreased renal toxicity. It can be given IM or IV and is approved for the use in children. Contraindications and cautions Carbapenems are contraindicated in the following conditions. Known allergy to the carbapenems or beta-lactams. Seizure disorders, which could be exasperated by the drug. Meningitis, because safety in patients with meningitis has not been established. Lactation, because it is not known whether these drugs enter breast milk, but potentially they could cause serious effects in the infant. Use caution during pregnancy, because carbapenems are used to treat only severe infections and the and the benefit of the drug must carefully weighed against the potential adverse effects on the fetus. Test urine function regularly when these drugs are used because they depend on the kidney for excretion and are toxic to the kidney. Eritopenem is not recommended for use in patients younger than 18 years of age. Superinfections can occur with any of the carbapenems. Closely monitor patients to deal with a new infection because it becomes overwhelming, or before it becomes overwhelming. CNS effects can include headache, dizziness, and altered mental state. Seizures have been reported when carbapenems are combined with other drugs. Monitor patients to provide safety measures if any of these occur. Clinically important drug-to-drug -drug interactions. Consider an alternative antibiotic treatment if a patient is on valproic acid. Valproic acid combination of these drugs can cause serum valproic acid levels to fall and increase the risk of seizures. Avoid concurrent use of imipenem with gancilclovir because this combination may also cause seizures. Nursing considerations for patients receiving carbapenems. Assessment history and examination. Assess for possible contraindications or cautions. Known allergy to any carbapenem or beta-lactam. Uh, obtain specific information about the nature and occurrence of al allergic reactions. History of renal disease. History of seizures and current pregnancy or lactation status. Perform physical assessment to establish baseline data for assessing the effectiveness of the drug and the occurrence of any adverse effects associated with drug therapy. Perform culture and sensitivity tests at the site of infection. Conduct orientation and reflex assessment to evaluate any CNS effects of the drug. Assess vital signs, respiratory rate, and adventitious sounds to monitor for signs of infection uh, or hypersensitivity reactions, uh, i.e. Temperature, temperature to assess for signs of symptom and symptoms of infection, f perform renal function tests to determine baseline function of kidneys and possibly the need to adjust dose. Nursing diagnosis. <coughs> Excuse me. Nursing diagnosis related to drug therapy might include the following: acute pain related to GI or CNS effects of the drug, risk for infection related to loss of normal flora, deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. In Implementation with rationale. Check culture and sensitivity reports to ensure that this drug of choice is the drug of choice for the patient. Ensure that the patient receives the full course of the carbapenem as prescribed to increase effectiveness and increase the risk for the development of resistant strains of bacteria. 
Monitor the site of infection and presenting signs and symptoms, e.g. fever, lethargy. Throughout the course of drug therapy, therapy failure to, uh, of these signs and symptoms to resolve may indicate need, need to reculture the site. Arrange to continue drug therapy for at least two days after all signs and symptoms resolve to decrease the development of resistant strains of bacteria. Monitor the patient regularly for signs of pseud pseudomum branus colitis, severe diarrhea, or superinfections to effectively arrange for discontinuation of drug or decreased dose as appropriate if any of these toxicities occur. Provide safety measures to protect the patient if CNS effects, such as confusion, dizziness, or seizures occur. Provide small frequent me meals as tolerated to relieve GI discomfort. Also provide adequate fluids to replace fluid lost with diarrhea if appropriate. Ensure that patient is hydrated at all times during drug therapy to minimize renal toxicity from drug exposure. Instruct the patient about the appropriate do dosage regimen and possible adverse effects to enhance patient knowledge about drug therapy and to promote compliance. Provide the following patient teaching. Take safety precautions such as changing positions slowly and avoid driving and ha hazardous tasks if CNS effects occur. Try to drink a lot of fluids and maintain nutrition. Very important, even though nausea, and vomiting, and diarrhea may occur. Report difficulty breathing, severe headaches, severe diarrhea, fever, and signs of infection. Evaluation. Monitor patient response to drug resolution of bacterial infection. Monitor for adverse effects, orientation and affect, super infections, GI toxicity, severe diarrhea effects. Evaluate, evaluate effectiveness of the teaching plan. Patient can name drug dosage possible, adverse effects to watch for, and specific measures to help avoid adverse effects. Monitor effectiveness of comfort and safety measures and compliance with therapeutic regimen. Oh my gosh, that was almost the same as the last one. Key points for carbapenems. Our carbapenems are used to treat serious infections caused by a wide range of bacteria. Monitor for GI effects, serious diarrhea, dizziness, and super infections. On to cephalosporins. The cephalosporins, table 9-3, were first introduced in the 1960s. These drugs are similar to the penicillins in structure and in activity. Over time, four generations of cephalosporins have been introduced, each group with its own spectrum of activity. First generation cephalosporins are largely effective against the same gram-positive bacteria that are affected by penicillin G, as well as the gram-negative bacteria Proteus Myrobilis, E. coli, and Klebsilla pneumoniae. Use the letters P, capital P, capital E, lowercase c, capital K, as a mnemonic device to remember which bacteria are susceptible to the first generation cephalosporins. Okay. First generation drugs include cefadroxil, Duracef, cefazolin, anacefazolicef, and Cephalexin or Keflex Biocef. Second generation cephalosporins are effective against the previously mentioned strains as well as Haemorphilus influenzae, Enterobacter aeruginis, and Neisseria, Neisseria species. Remember Henpeck. So the first one was Peck, the second one is Henpeck, and it's capital H, capital E, capital N, capital P, e, and then lowercase E, so for PE, which is something, Peck and capital C, capital K. Second generation drugs are less effective against gram-positive bacteria. These include Cephalidor or Cellcor, or Seclor, um... So, foxitin or mefoxin, ceprazil or cefzil, cef and cefuroxine or ceftanzinicef. Third generation cephalosporins, which are effective against all of the previous mentioned strains, are relatively weak against gram positive bacteria, but are more potent against the gram-negative bacilli, as well as against Cerecia 
Maricens. Remember Henpex with the extra S, the Sarisha. Third generation. <coughs> Excuse me. Third generation drugs include Ceftonir, Omnicef, Cefoparazone, or Cefabid, Ceftamine, or, or Clafuran, uh, Cefpodoxine, or Vantin, Ceft Ceftazidime or Septaz, Tazacef, um, Ceftabutin or Sedex, Ceftazomine or Ceftazozine or Ceftzox, and Ceft Ceftriazone or Rosefin. Rosefin, there's one. Fourth generation Cephalosporins are in development. The first drug of this group, cefapine, or maxapine, is active against gram-negative and and gram-positive organisms, including cephalosporin-resistant Staphylococcus and P. Aragonosia. Fourth generation drugs also include Ceftitoran or spect Spectrocef. This class depends on the sensitivity of the involved organism, the root of choice, and sometimes the cost invoked. It is important to reserve cephalosporins for appropriate situations because cephalosporin resistant bacteria are appearing in increasing numbers. Before therapy begins, perform a culture and sensitivity test to evaluate the causative organism and appropriate sensitivity to the antibiotic being used. So do a culture before you use these. Pharmacokinetics. The following cephalosporins are well absorbed from the GI tract. The first generation drugs, ceph cephadroxyl and cephalexin. The second generation drugs, cephchlor and cephprazil. And cephiroxamine. I'm cephiroxime. The third generation drugs, ceftonir, cephpodoxime, and ceftibutin. And the fourth generation drugs, ceftitorin Ceft and cefepime. The others are absorbed well after IM injections or IV administration. Box 9.4 provides calculation practice using ceftonir. The cephalosporins are primarily metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine. These drugs cross the placenta and enter breast milk. See contraindications and cautions. Contraindications and cautions. Avoid the use of cephalosporins in patients with known allergies to cephalosporins or penicillins because cross-sensitivity is common. Use with caution in patients with hepatic or renal impairment because these drugs are toxic to the kidneys and could interfere with the metabolism and excretion of the drug. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition, use, we use with caution in pregnant or lactating patients. Because potential effects on the fetus and infant are not known, use only if the benefits clearly outweigh the potential risk of toxicity to the fetus or infant. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff about big table about dosage, dosages. Reserve cephalosporins for appropriate situations because cephalosporin resistant bacteria are appearing in increasing numbers. Before therapy begins, perform a culture and sensitivity test to evaluate the causative organism and appropriate sensitivity to the antibiotic being used. Adverse effects. The most common adverse effect of the cephalosporins involves the GI tract and includes nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, abdominal pain, and flatulence. Pseudomembranous colitis, a potentially dangerous disorder, 
has also been reported with some cephalosporins. A particular drug should be discontinued immediately at any sign of violent, bloody diarrhea or abdominal pain. CNS symptoms include headache, dizziness, lethargy, and per paresthesia. Nephrotoxicity is also associated with the use of cephalosporins, most particularly in patients who have a predisposing renal in insufficiency. Other adverse effects include superinfections, which occur frequently because of the death of Superinfections, which occur frequently because of the death of protective bacteria of the normal flora, patient monitor patients receiving parenteral uh, cephalosporins. Parenteral, never pronounce that word. For the possibility of phlebitis with IV administration or local abscesses at the site of an IM injection. Clinically important drug interactions. Concurrent administration of cephalosporins with aminoglycosides increases the risk of nephrotoxicity. Frequently monitor patients receiving this combination and evaluate serum blood ure urea nitrogen, or BUN, and creatinine levels. <coughs> Excuse me. Patients who receive oral anticoagulants in addition to cephalosporins may experience increased bleeding. Teach these patients how to monitor for blood loss, e.g. bleeding gums, easy bruising, and be aware that the dose of oral anticoagulant may need to be reduced. Instruct the patient receiving cephalosporins to avoid alcohol for up to 72 hours after discontinuation of the drug to prevent a, 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 a disulfiram-like reaction, which results in unpleasant symptoms such as flushing, throbbing, headache, nausea, and vomiting, chest pain, palpitation, dyspnea, syncopa, syncopa, vertigo, blurred vision, and in, ex in, in extreme reactions, cardiovascular collapse, convulsions, or even death. Um, no alcohol, 72 hours after cephalosporins. Okay, nursing considerations for patients receiving cephalosporins. Assess for, assess for possible allergies. Uh, to penicillin, cephalosporins, or any other allergies because cross sensitivity often occurs. Uh, obtain special information about the nature and occurrence of the aller allergic reactions, history of renal disease, which could exasperate nephrotoxicity related to cephalosporin and current pregnancy or lactation status. Perform physical assessment to establish baseline data for ass assessing the effectiveness of the drug and the occurrence of any adverse effects associated with drug therapy. Examine the skin for any rash or lesions. Examine injection sites for abscess formation and note respiratory status, including rate, depth, and adv adventitious sounds to provide a baseline for determining an adverse reaction. Perform culture and sensitivity tests at the site of infection. Check renal function test results, including bun and creatinine clearance to assess the status of renal functioning and detect the possible need to alter dose. Nursing diagnosis. Diagnosis seats. Nursing diagnosis related to drug therapy might include the following. Acute pain related to GI or CNS effects of drug risk for, infec of drug risk for infection related to repeated injections. Deficient fluid volume and imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to diarrhea, deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Implement, implementation with rationale. Check culture and sensitivity reports to ensure that this drug is, uh, is the drug of choice for this patient. Monitor renal function test values before and periodically during therapy to arrange for appropriate dose reduction as needed. Ensure that patient receives the full course of cephalosporin as prescribed, divided around the clock to increase effectiveness and increase the risk of development of resistant strains. Monitor the infection site and presenting signs and symptoms, e.g. fever, lethargy, throughout the course of drug therapy. Failure of these signs and symptoms to resolve may indicate the need for reculture the site. Uh, arrange to continue drug therapy for at least two days after the resolution of all signs and symptoms to help prevent the development of resistant strains of bacteria. 
Provide small frequent meals as tolerated. Provide frequent mouth care and ice chips or sugarless candy to suck at uh, if the Midas sore mouth or problems to relieve discomfort and provide or problems to relieve discomfort. Okay. Provide adequate fluids to replace fluid loss with diarrhea. Monitor the patient for any signs of superinfection to arrange for treatment of superinfection occurs. Monitor injection sites regularly to provide warm compresses and gentle massage to injection sites if they are painful or swollen. If signs of phlebitis occur, remove the IV line and reinsert in a different vein. Initiate safety measures including adequate lighting, side rails on the bed, and assistance with ambulation to protect the patient from injury if CNS effects occur. Instruct the patient about appropriate dosage schedule and about possible side effects to enhance patient knowledge about drug therapy and to promote compliance. Provide the f- following patient teaching. Take uh, safety precautions, including changing positions slowly, oath or static hypertension, um, drink a lot of fluids, maintain nutrition, very important for nausea and vomiting, may occur, uh, though... Mm, for difficulty breathing, severe headaches, severe diarrhea, dizziness or weakness, avoid con- consuming alcohol beverages while receiving cephalosporins for at least 72 hours after completing the drug course because serious side effects could occur. Evaluation. Monitor patient response to drug. Uh, resolution of bacterial infection. Monitor for a- adverse effects, orientation, and affect renal toxicity. Blah, 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 all the same stuff. Key points, cephalosporins are large, a are large group of antibiotics similar to penicillin and are effective against a wide range of bacteria monitored for GI upsets and diarrhea, uh, pseudomembranous colitis, headache, dizziness, and super infections. All right, fluoroquinolones. Fluoroquinolones, table 9-4, are a relatively new synthetic class of antibiotic with a broad spectrum of activity. Fluoroquinolones include ciprofloxacin, or cipro, which is the most widely used fluoroquinolone, gemofloxacin, effective, levofloxacin, it, it was gemifloxacin, le, levofloxacin, or levoquin, lomafloxacin, or maxiquin, moxifloxacin, or avalox, norofloxacin, or norosin, and Ox or aflaxacin, flaxin, ocuflox or ocuflox. Therapeutic agents and indications: the fluoroquinolones enter the bacterial cell by passive diffusion through channels in the cell membrane. Once inside, they interfere with the action of DNA enzymes necessary for growth and reproduction of the bacteria. See Figure Nine One. <coughs> Excuse me. This leads to cell death because the bacterial DNA is damaged and the cell cannot be maintained. The fluoroquinolones have the advantage of a unique way of disrupting bacterial activity. There is little cross-resistance with other forms of antibiotics. However, misuse of these drugs in the short time the class has been available has led to the existence of resistant strains of bacteria. See cautions and contraindications. So they enter the cell by passive diffusion through channels in cell membrane. Once inside, they interfere with the action of DNA. Um, the fluoroquinolones are indicated for treating infection caused by susceptible strains of gram-negative bacteria, including E. coli, P. mirabilis, K. pneumonae, Enterobacter coloque, uh, Proteus vulgaris, Proteus retgera, Morganella morganae, Moraxella catahalis, H. influenza, H. para influenza, P. anigenosa, Cytobacter frundi, frundi, S. auris, Staphylococcus epididymis, some Neisseria gonorrheas, and uh, Group D streptococci. These infections frequently include in- urinary tract, respiratory tract, and skin infections. Ciprofloxin is effective against a wide spectrum of gram-negative bacteria. In 2001, it was approved for prevention of anthrax infection in areas that might be exposed to germ warfare. It is also effective against typhoid fever. 
See Table 9.4 for usual indications for each of these agents. Pharmacokinetics, the fluoroquinolones are absorbed from the GI tract, metabolized in the liver, and excreted in the urine and feces. These drugs are widely distributed in the body and cross the placenta and enter breast milk. See contraindications. Ciprofloxacin is available in injectable oral and topical forms. Gemifloxacin, lomafloxacin, and moxifloxacin are oral agents. Levofloxacin is available in oral and IV forms. Because of its parenteral availability, it may be preferred for severe infections or for use when the patient cannot take oral drugs. Norfloxacin is also available in an oral form. Offloxacin can be given IV or orally and is also available as an ophthalmic agent for the treatment of ocular infections caused by susceptible bacteria. Contraindications and cautions. Fluoroquinolones are contraindicated in patients with a known allergy to any fluoroquinolone and in pregnant or lactating patients because potential side effects on the fetus and infant are not known. Use caution with presence of renal dysfunction, which could interfere with the metab metabolism and excretion of the drug and seizures, wh which could be exasperated by the drug's effect on cell membrane channels. Because so many resistant strains are emerging, Always perform culture and sensitivity tests of infected tissue to determine the exact bacterial cause and sensitivity. These drugs have been associated with lesions in developing cartilage and therefore are not recommended for use in children younger than 18 years of age. Adverse effects. These drugs are associated with relatively mild adverse reactions. The most common are headache, dizziness, insomnia, and depression related to possible effects on the CNS membranes. GI effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and dry mouth related to direct drug effect on the GI tract and possibly to stimulation of the chemoreceptor trigger zone, CTZ, in the CNS. Immunological, immunological effects include bone marrow suppression, which may be related to drug effects on the cells of the bone marrow that rapidly turn over. Other adverse effects include fever, rash, photosensitivity, a potentially serious adverse effect that can cause severe skin reaction. Advise patients to avoid sun and ultraviolet light exposure to use protective clothing and sunscreens. Clinically important drug-to-drug -drug interactions. When fluoroquinolones are taken concurrently with iron salts, sucralfate, mineral supplements, or antacids, the therapeutic effect of the fluoroquinolones is decreased. If the drug, if this drug combination is necessary, administration of the two agents should be separated at, by at least four hours. If four quinolones are taken with drugs that increase the QT interval or cause torsades de pointes, uh, like uh, quinidine, procainamide, amiodar Darone, uh, Sotolol, uh, Erythromycin, Erythromycin, uh, Terfenidine, Pentamidine, Tricyclics, and or Phenothiazines, severe to fatal cardiac reaction are possible. These combinations should be avoided, but they must be used. But if they must be used, patients should be hospitalized with continual car cardiac monitoring. Combining fluoroquinolones with their theophylline leads to increased theophylline levels because the two drugs are use similar metabolic pathways. The theophylline dose should be decreased by one half and serum theophylline levels monitored carefully. In addition, when fluoroquinolones are combined with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, an increase of CNS stimulation is possible. This combination is used closely monitor patients, especially those who have a history of seizures or CNS problems. Nursing considerations for patients receiving fluoroquinolones. Assessment and history examination. Assess for possible contraindications or cautions. Known allergy for quinolones. Obtain specific information about the nature and occurrence of allergic reactions. History of renal disease 
which could interfere with excretion of the drug and pr current pregnancy or lactation status because of potential adverse effects on the fetus or infant. Perform physical assessment to establish baseline d data for assessing the effectiveness of the drug and the occurrence of many, any adverse effects associated with drug therapy. Um, nursing diagnosis. Nursing diagnosis related to drug therapy might include following acute pain related to GI, CNS, or skin effects of the drug, deficient fluid volume and imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirement related to GI effects of the drug, deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Implementation with rationale. Check culture and sensitivity reports to ensure that this is the drug of choice. Monitor renal function tests for initiating therapy. Appropriate blah, blah, blah. Uh, ensure the patient receivers the full, receives the full course. Uh, monitor site for infection. Um, arrange for continued drug therapy two days after. Provide small frequent meals. Um... Nothing new there. Evaluation. Monitor patient response to the drug. Uh, resolution of bacterial infection. Monitor for adverse effects. Um, all the same things there. Key points. Fluoroquinolones inhibit the action of DNA enzymes in susceptible gram-negative bacteria. They are used to treat a wide range of infections. Monitor the patient for headache, dizziness, GI upsets, upsets and bone marrow depression and cause the, and caution the patient about the risk of photosensitivity reactions. <coughs> On the, to penicillins and penicillinase resistant antibiotics. Penicillin table 95 was the first antibiotic introduced for clinical use. Sir Alexander Fleming used penicillin penicillium molds to produced the original penicillin in the 1920s. Subsequent versions of penicillin were developed to decrease the adverse effects of the drug and to modify it to act on resistant bacteria. Penicillins include g benzathine or bisillin or permapen, penicillin g potassium or Pfizer pen, penicillin g procaine or crystacillin AS, uh, penicillin V or v VTIDS, uh, amoxicillin or amoxil or trimox, ampicillin or principin, and ticarcillin, ticarcillin or ticar. With the prolonged use of penicillin, more and more bacterial species have synthesized the enzyme penicillinase to con counteract, counteract the effects of. Effect, counteract the effects of penicillin. Researchers have developed a group of drugs with a resistance to penicillinase, which allows them to remain effective and against bacteria that are now resistant to the penicillins. Penicillin-resistant antibiotics include nafcillin and oxacillin. The actual drug chosen depends on the sensitivity of the bacteria causing the infection. The desired and available routes and the personal experience of the clinician with the particular agent. Therapeutic actions and indications. The penicillins and penicillinase resistant antibiotics produce bacterial cytal effects by interfering with the ability of susceptible bacteria to build their cell walls when they are dividing. See figure 9-2. These drugs prevent the bacteria from biosynthesizing the framework of the cell wall and the bacteria with weakened cell walls swell in the wait, whoop, these drugs prevent the bacteria from biosynthesizing the framework of the cell wall and the bacteria with weakened cell walls swell and then burst from osmotic pressure within the cell because human cells do not use the biochemical process that the bacteria use to form the cell wall this effect is selective toxic is a selective toxicity the penicillins are indicated for the treatment of streptococcal infections, including pharyngitis, tonsillitis, scarlet fever, and endocarditis. Monococcal infections, 
staphylococcal infections, furospiroshedal infections, uh, rat bite fever, diphtheria, anthrax, syphilis, and uncomplicated gonococcal infections. At high doses, this drug, these drugs are also used to treat uh, meningococcal meningitis. See Table 9.5 for usual indications for each agent. Pharmacokinetics, most of the penicillins are rapidly absorbed from the GI tract, reaching peak levels in one hour. They are sensitive to the gastric acid levels in the stomach and should be taken on an empty stomach to ensure adequate absorption. Penicillins are excreted unchanged in the urine, making renal functions an important factor in safe use of the drug. Penicillins enter breast milk and can cause adverse reactions. Um, contraindications and cautions. These drugs are contraindicated in patients with allergies to penicillin or cephalosporins or other allergens. Penicillin sensitivity tests are available if the patient's history of allergy is unclear and a penicillin is the drug of choice. Use the caution use with caution in patients with renal disease. Uh, lower dose are necessary because excretion is reduced. Although there are no adequate studies of use during pregnancy, use in patients who are pregnant and in lactating patients should be delimited to situations in which the mother clearly would benefit from the drug because diarrhea and super infections may occur in the infant. Perform culture sensitivity tests to ensure the causative organism is, uh, organism is sensitive to the penicillin selected for use. With the emergences of many resistant strains of bacteria, this has become increasingly mm -mm. important. Adverse effects. <coughs> the more adverse effects of penicillin therapy, the major adverse effects of penicillin therapy involve the GI tract. Common adverse effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, glossitis, glossitis uh, stomatitis, gastritis, sore mouth, and furry tongue, furry tongue. These effects are primarily related to the loss of bacteria from the normal flora and the subsequent opportunistic infections that occur. Super infections, including yeast infections, are also very common and are again associated with the loss of bacteria from the normal flora. Pain and inflammation at the injection site can occur in injectable forms of the, the drug. Uh, hypersensitivity reaction may include rash, fever, wheezing, and with repeated exposure, anaphylaxis that can progress to anaphylaxis shock and death. Clinically important drug interactions. If penicillins and penicillinase resistant antibiotics are taken concurrently with tetracyclines in a decrease in the effectiveness of the penicillin's results, this combination should be avoided if at all possible or the penicillin doses should be raised which could increase the occurrence of adverse effects. In addition, when the parenteral form, forms of penicillin and penicillinase resistant drugs are administered in combination with any of the parenteral aminoglycosides, inactivation of the aminoglycosides occurs. These combinations should be avoided. Nursing considerations for patients receiving penicillins and penicillinase resistant antibiotics. Assessment history and exam examination. Um, examine skin and mucous membranes for any rashes or lesions and injection sites for abscess formation to provide a baseline for possible adverse effects. Um, I'm skipping some of these because they're all the same. Note respiratory status to provide a baseline for occurrence of hypersensitivity reactions. Examine the abdomen to monitor for adverse effects. Evaluate renal function test findings including bun and creatinine clearance to assess the status of renal functioning and determine any needed alteration in dose. Nursing diagnoses. Nursing diagnoses related to drug therapy might include the following. Acute pain related to GI effects of drug. 
and balanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to multiple GI effects of the drug or to super infections, deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy, implementation with rationale, uh, check culture and sensitivity tests. Okay, that's the same. Let's see if anything's different here. Okay, those are all the same. Evaluation, monitor patient, response to drug, resolution of bacterial infection. Um, those are all the same. Key points. I'll just go over this part here. The drug should be taken on an empty stomach, full eight ounce glass of water, one hour before meals or two to three hours after meals is best. Do not use fruit juice, soft drinks, or milk to take your drug because these foods may interfere with its effectiveness. This does not apply to bacampicillin, amoxicillin, or penicillin. My, but, or penicillin V. Common effects of this of these drugs include stomach upset, diarrhea, changes in taste, and change in color of tongue. Small frequent meals may help. It is important to try to maintain good nutrition. These effects should go away when the drug is stopped. Report any of the following to your health care provider. Hives, rash, fever, difficulty breathing, severe diarrhea. Tell any doctor, nurse, or other health care provider that you are taking this drug Keep this drug and all medications out of the reach of children or pets. Do not share this drug with other people and do not use the medication to self-treat with other infections. It is important that you complete the full course of your prescription, even if you feel better before you finish it. Key points. The penicillins are one of the oldest classes of antibiotics, and many resistant strains have developed. The penicillinase-resistant antibiotics are created to combat bacteria that produce an enzyme to destroy the penicillin. Penicillins are used to treat a broad spectrum of infections, including respiratory tract infections and UTIs. Monitor the patient on penicillin for nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, super infections, and the possibility of hypersensitivity reactions. Sulfonamides. The sulfonamide or sulfa drugs, table 9-6, are drugs that inhibit folic acid synthesis. Sulfonamides include sulfadiazine, or, or that's generic, sulfasoxazole, gantrisin, sulfalazine, azulfidine, and cotrimozole, oh, oxazole, which is uh, septra bactrim. Bactri bactri Therapeutic actions and indications. Folic acid is necessary for the synthesis of purines and, pyram and pyrimidines, which are precursors of RNA and DNA. For cells to grow and reproduce, they require folic acid. Humans cannot synthesize folic acid and depend on the folate in their diet to obtain this essential substance. Bacteria are impermeable to folic acid and must synthesize it inside the cell. The sulfon amides com competitively block para-aminobenzoic acid, or PABA, to prevent the synthesis of folic acid in susceptible bacteria that synthesize their own folates for the production of RNA and DNA, figure 9.2. This includes gram-negative and gram-positive Bacteria such as Chlamydia, Trichomonas, and Nocardia, and some strains of H. Influenza, E. coli, and P. Mirabilis. Because of the emergence of resistant bacteria strains of the development of newer antibiotics, the sulfa drugs are no longer used much. However, they remain in an inexpensive and effective treatment for UTIs and trachoma. 
especially in developing countries and when a cost is an issue. These drugs are used to treat trachoma, a leading cause of blindness, nocardiosis, which causes pneumonias, as well as brain abscesses and inflammation, UTIs and sexually transmitted diseases. Also, uh, sulfizoxazole has an off-label use of prophylaxis for recurrent uh, otitis media. See table 9-6 for usual indications for each of these agents. Pharmacokinetic sulf sulf sulfonamides are teratogenic. They are distri distributed into breast milk. Uh, see contraindications. These drugs are given orally are absorbed from the GI tract, metabolized in the liver, and excreted in urine. The time to peak level and the half-life of the individual drug vary. <coughs> Sulfadiazine is an oral agent slowly absorbed from the GI tract, reaching peak levels in three to six hours. Sulfasoxazole is rapidly absorbed from the GI tract, reaching peak levels in two hours after being metabolized in the liver. It is excreted in the urine with a half life of 4.5 to 7.8 hours. Sulfazolazine is a sulfapyridine that is carried by aminos salicylic acid or aspirin which release the amino salicylic acid in the colon in a delayed release form. This sulfa drug is also used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and does not respond to other treatments. It is rapidly absorbed from the GI tract reaching peak levels in two to six hours after being metabolized in the liver it is excreted in the urine with a half-life of five to ten hours. Cotrimoxazole is a combination drug that combines sulfamethazole and trimethoprim, another antibacterial drug. It is rapidly absorbed from the GI tract, reaching peak levels in two hours after being metabolized in the liver. It is excreted in the urine with a half-life of 7 to 12 hours. Contraindications and cautions. The sulfonamides are contraindicated with any known allergy to sulfonamides, to sulfonylureas, or to thiazide diuretics. Because cross-sensitivity occur during pregnancy because of the drugs cause birth defects, as well as uh, chemic terrace, and during lactation because of a risk of chemic terrace, diarrhea, and rash in the infant. They should be used with caution in patients with renal disease or history of kidney stones because of the possibility of increased toxic effects of the drug. Adverse effects associated with sulfonamides include GI effects such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, anorexia, stomatitis, and hepatic injury, which are all related to direct irritation of the GI tract and death of something. I lost. I have no words. We'll just go to clinically important drug to drug interactions. If sulfonamides are taken with tolbutamide, telazamide, gliburide, glipizide, acetohexamide, or chlorpropramide, the risk of hypo hypoglycemia increases. If this combination is needed, the patient should be monitored and a dose adjustment of the anti-diabetic agent should be made. An increase in dose will then be needed when sulfonamide therapy stops. When sulfonamides are taken with cyclosporin, the risk of nephrotoxicity rises. If this combination is essential, the patient should be monitored closely and the sulfenamide stopped at any site of renal dysfunction. Dermatolo dermatological effects include photosensitivity and rash related to direct effects on the dermal cells. Wide range of hypersensitivity reactions may also occur. Renal effects are related to the filtration of the drug in the glomerulus and included crystalluria, uh, hematuria, and proteinuria. 
uh, which can progress to a nephrotic syndrome and possible toxic de nephrosis. CNS effects include headache, dizziness, vertigo, ataxia, convulsions, and depression, possibly related to drug effects on the nerves. Bone marrow depression may occur and is related to drug effects on the cells that in turn or that turn over rapidly in the bone marrow. Nursing considerations for patients receiving sulfonamides. Assessment, history, and examination. Uh, assess for allergy, um, uh, allergy to sulf sulfonamides, sulfonylureas, or thiazide diuretic because cross sensitivity often results. Obtain specific information about the nature and occurrence of allergic reaction, history of renal disease that could interfere with excretion of the drug and lead to increased toxicity and current pregnancy and lactation status. Uh, perform a physical assessment, establish baseline, uh, examine skin and mucous membrane for any rash. Uh, okay, it's all the same. Nursing diagnosis related to drug therapy might include the following. Acute pain related to GI, CNS, or skin effects of the drug. Distributed sensory or d disturbed sensory perception related to CNS effects. Imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements related to multiple GI effects of the drug. Deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Implementation with rationale. Um, check culture and sensitivity to ensure it's drug choice. Uh, it's all the same. Here, there's a new one. Monitor CBC and urine analysis test results before and periodically during drug therapy to check for adverse effects. Um, instruct patient about the appropriate dosage regimen, the proper way to take the drug on an empty stomach with a full glass of water and possible adverse effects to enhance patient knowledge about drug therapy and to promote compliance. Uh, provide patient teaching, avoid driving or operating dangerous machinery because dizziness, lethargy, and ataxia may occur. Try to drink a lot of fluids and maintain nutrition. Very important, even though nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may occur. Uh, report difficulty in breathing, rash ringing in the ears, fever, sore throat, or blood in the urine. Evaluation. Monitor patient response to the drug, uh, resolution of bacterial infection, monitor for adverse effects, i.e. GI effects, uh, CNS, rash, and crystallineurias, crystalline pee. Um, evaluate the effectiveness of the teaching, monitor effectiveness, comfort, safety measures. Okay, key points. Sulfonamide, sulfur, sulfonamides our older drugs may many strains have developed resistance to sulfonamides so they are no longer widely used monitor the patient for cns toxicity nausea vomiting diarrhea liver injury serenal toxicity and bone marrow depression tetracyclines the tetracycline table 9.7 were developed as semi-synthetic antibiotics based on the structure of a common soil mold they are composed of four rings which is how they got their name. Researchers have developed newer tetracyclines to increase the absorption and tissue penetration. Widespread resistance to the tetracycline has limited their use in recent years. Tetracyclines include tetracycline, stam, or some, mm, some mycin, and panmycin, democlocycline or declamycin, and doxycycline or dorix, also called peristat, periostat, excuse me, and minocycline or minosin, minosin. Therapeutic actions and indications. The, the tetracyclines work by inhibiting protein synthesis and a wide range of bacteria leading to the inability of the bacteria to multiply C figure 92. Because the affected protein is similar to a protein found in human cells, these drugs can be toxic to human at high concentrations. Tetracyclines are indicated for treatment of infectious infections caused by rickettsii, amnemone, Borrelia reincurrentis, H. influenza, Hemorphialis ducrevi, Pasteurella pestis, Pasteurella turbulensis, 
Bartonella baculiformis, Bacteroides species, Vibrio coma, Vibrio fetus, Brucella species, E. coli, E. aerogenes, Shigella species, Acine bacter calacticus, uh, Klebsilla species, Diplococcus pneumoniae, and S. aureus, against agents that cause psittacosis, uh, ornithosis, and lymph organ, lymph organ something, lymph organ aloma venerum, and granulom inguinale. In, when penicillin is contraindicated in susceptible infections and for treatment of acne in uncomplicated GU infections caused by C. trachomatis, some of the tetracyclines are also used as adjuncts in the treatment of certain protozoa infections. See Table 9-7 for usual indications for each agent. Pharmacokinetics. Tetracyclines are absorbed adequately but not completely from the GI tract. Their absorption is affected by food, iron, calcium, and other drugs in the stomach. Tetracyclines are con con concentrated in the liver and excreted unchanged in the urine with half-lives ranging from 12 to 24 hour, 25 hours. These drugs cross the placenta and pass into breast milk. See contraindications and cautions. Tetracycline is available in oral and topical forms in addition to being available as an ophthalmic agent. Democlocycline is available in oral form. Doxycycline and minocycline are available in IV, <coughs> excuse me, in oral forms. Contraindications and cautions. Tetracyclines are uh, contraindicated in patients with known allergy, woo, pregnancy, lactation, because uh, it, it affects developing bones and teeth. Uh, also, an allergy to tartrazine because uh, it affects specific oral preparation or in a specific oral preparation that consists tartrazine um, the ophthalmic preparation is con is contraindicated in patients who have fungal myobacterial or viral ocular infections uh, because the drug kills not only the undesired bacteria but also bacteria of normal flora which increases the risk for exasperation of the ocular infection that is being treated. Tetracycline should be used with caution in children younger than 8 years of age because they can potentially damage developing bones and teeth and in parents with patients with hepatic or renal dysfunction because they are contraindicated uh, they are concentrated in the bile and excreted in the urine. So, adverse effects. The major adverse effects of tetracycline therapy involve direct irritation of the GI tract and include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, gl glossitis, and dysphagia. Fatal hepatoxicity related to the drug's irritating effect on the liver has also been reported. Skeletal effects involve damage to the teeth and bones uh, because tetracyclines have an affinity for teeth and bones. They accumulate there, weakening the structure and causing staining and pitting of teeth and bones. Dermatological effects include photosensitivity and rash. Superinfections, including yeast infections, occur when bacteria of the normal flora are destroyed. Local effects, such as pain and stinging with topical or ocular application, are fairly common. Hematological effects are less frequent such as hemolytic anemia and bone marrow suppression secondary to the effects of bone marrow cells that turn over rapidly. Hypersensitivity reactions reportedly ranging from urticaria to anaphylaxis and also, uh, and also include intracranial hypertension. Clin clinically important drug-to-drug -drug interactions. When penicillin G and tetracycline are taken concurrently, the effectiveness of penicillin G decreases if these co this combination is used, the dose of penicillin should be increased. When oral contraceptives are taken with tetracyclines, the effectiveness of the oral contraceptive, contraceptive decreases. 
and patients who take oral contraceptives should be advised to use an additional form of birth control while receiving the tetracycline. Okay, critical thinking scenario, antibiotics and oral contraceptives. The situation. GS, a 27-year-old married female graduate student, is seen in the student health clinic a few weeks into the fall semester. She has developed a severe sin sinusitis and complains of head pressure, difficulty sleeping, fever, and muscle aches and pains. A culture is done, and the next day the culture and sensitivity report identifies the infecting organism as a stain of Klebsiella that is sensitive to tetracycline. GS returns to the uh, clinic to get the prescription for tetracycline. In talking with you, GS tells you that she began graduate school with plans to start a family in two years. After completing her program, she is a very organized person, has carefully planned her rigorous coursework and her non-academic oh, non activities so that almost every hour is scheduled. She states that she has successfully used low-dose oral contraceptives for four years and plans to continue this method of birth control. Critical thinking. How do tetracyclines and some other antibiotics and oral contraceptives, inter contraceptives interact? What are the possible ramifications of continuing to take oral contraceptives during a pregnancy? What nursing interventions are appropriate for GS? What teaching points should be stressed with GS? Think about the nature of herpe herpes well, her personality <laughs> and the problems that an unplanned pregnancy might cause. How can you help GS to cope with her infection, her drug regimen, and rigor schedule? Discussion. Several antibiotics, including tetracycline, are known to lead to the failure of oral contraceptives as evidenced by breakthrough bleeding and unplanned pregnancy. Although the exact way in which these drugs interact is completely is incompletely understood, it is thought that the antibiotics destroy certain bacteria in the normal flora of the gastrointestinal tract. These, these bacteria are necessary for the breakdown and eventual absorption of the female hormones contained in the contraceptive. The five days of antibiotic treatment, together with the time necessary for rebuilding the normal flora, can be long enough for the hypothalamus to lose the negative feedback signal provided by the contraceptives that prevents ovulation and preparation of the uterus. Sensing the low hormone level, the hypothalamus releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which leads to the release of fo follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone with subsequent ovulation. GS will need a clear explanation and follow-up in written form about the risks of oral contraceptive failure while she is receiving tetracycline therapy. She should be encouraged to use an additional form of birth control during the course of her antibiotic use and to read all of the liter literature that comes with oral contraceptives as well as patient teaching information that should be provided with the antibiotic. GS also may need a great deal of support and encouragement at this time. The sinus infection may increase her stress by interfering with her ability to stick to her rigid schedule. Discussing the positive possibility of an unplanned pregnancy may cause even more stress. The health clinic visit could be used pro uh, as an opportunity to allow GS to talk to to talk to vent any frustrations and stress and then to encourage her to make time for herself. The nurse should stress the importance of a good diet which will ensure that her body has the components she will need to fight this infection and to heal and to ward off other infections as well as the importance of adequate rest and gynecological exams and has been rest and ex exercise. The nurse should also make sure that GS is receiving annual gyne gynecological exams and has been advised not to smoke. All healthcare professionals who are involved with GS should consider the impact that an unplanned pregnancy could have on this very organized woman and use this as an example of the importance of clear, concise patient teaching and the administration of drug therapy. 
Assessment history and examination, allergy to any tetracycline, hepatic or renal dysfunction, pregnancy or lactation, concurrent use of oral contraceptives and acids, iron products, digoxin, or penicillins, penicillins general, site of infection, culture and sensitivity, to, uh, skin color, lesions, respiratory, uh, respiration, adventitious sounds, GI liver, evaluation, bowel, bowel. Bowel sounds, usual output laboratory data, liver and renal function tests and urine analysis, nursing diagnosis, acute pain related GI effects, super infection, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirement related to GI effects, potential for injury related to central nervous effects, deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Uh, implementation, form culture and sensitivity tests before beginning therapy. Uh, yep. This is all the same. Okay, so back to, back to the regular book. When metho when methoxyfurane is combined with tetracycline, the risk of nephrotoxicity increases. If it at all possible, this combination should be avoided. In addition, digoxin toxicity toxicity. Uh, rises when tetracyclines are taken concurrently, so digoxin's a big one. Digoxin levels should be monitored and dose adjusted appropriately during a treatment and after after tetracycline therapy is discontinued. Finally, decreased absorption of te tetracycline results from oral combinations with calcium salts, magnesium salts, zinc salts, aluminum salts, bismuth salts, iron uh, urinary alkan alkalizers and charcoal. Clinically important f drug food interactions because oral tetracyclines because oral tet tetracyclines are not absorbed effectively if taken with food or dairy products, they should be administered on an empty stomach one hour before or two to three hours after any meal. Assessment history. Mm, all the same. Uh, you should check for allergy to tetracycline or to tartrazine. Uh, it's in certain oral preparations because cross sensitivity often occurs. Obtain specific information about the nature and occurrence of allergic reactions. Uh, history of renal or hepatic disease. Uh, yeah, that's it for those. How about nursing diagnosis? Uh, diarrhea related to drug effects. Imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirement related to GI effects, alteration in taste, and super infections. Impaired skin integrity related to rash and photosensitivity. Deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Implementation with the rationale. Ensure a patient receives the full course of tetracycline as prescribed. The oral drug should be taken on an empty stomach one hour before or two hours after meals with a full 8-ounce glass of water. Concomitant, concomitant use of concomitant use of Antacids or salts should be avoided because they interfere with drug absorptions. These precautions will increase drug effectiveness and decrease the development of resistant strains. Mm. Discontinue the drug immediately if hypersensitivity reactions occur to avoid the possibility of severe reactions. Uh, provide small frequent meals, ice chips, sugarless candy, suck on Um Monitor for signs of super infections to arrange for treatment is appropriate. Encourage patient to apply sunscreen and wear clothing to protect exposed skin from skin rashes and sunburn associated with photos photosensitivity. Um, Provide the patient teaching, try to drink a lot of fluids, maintain nutrition, very important, even though nausea, blah, 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 to use a barrier contraceptive method because oral contraceptives may not be effective while tetracycline is being used. Note that super infections may occur. Appropriate treatment can be arranged through the healthcare provider. 
Use sunscreens, protective clothing, sensitivity, sun occurs. Know when to report dangerous adverse effects such as difficulty breathing, rash, itching, watery diarrhea, cramps, or changes in color of urine or stool. Evaluation. Monitor the patient's response to the drug. Resolution of bacterial infection. Monitor for adverse effects, GI effects, rash, and super infection. Uh, evaluate the effectiveness of the teaching plan. Patient can name the drug dosage possible. Adverse effects to expect, what to expect, and specific uh, measures to help avoid adverse effects. Monitor effectiveness of comfort and safety measures and compliance with the regimen. Key points. Tetracyclines inhibit protein synthesis and prevent bacteria from multiplying. They in inhibit protein synthesis and prevent bacteria from multiplying. Tetracyclines can damage, can cause damage to developing teeth and bones and should not be used with pregnant women or children. Monitor the patient for GI effects, bone marrow depression, rash, and super infections. Caution women with tetracycline may make, uh, that tetracycline may make oral contraceptives ineffective. Okay. Anti, mm, sorry, anti-mycobacterials. Anti-mycobacterials. Mycobacteria, the common, the or the group of bacteria that contain the pathogens that cause tuberculosis and leprosy are classified on the basis of their ability to hold a stain even in the presence of a destaining agent such as acid. Because of this property, they are called acid-fast bacteria. The mycobacteria have an outer coat of myocolic acid that protects them from many disinfectants and allows them to survive for long, long periods in the environment. It may be necessary to treat these slow-growing bacteria for several years before they can be eradicated. Myobacteria cause serious infectious diseases. The bacterium Myobacterium tuberculosis causes tuberculosis, the leading cause of death from infectious disease in the world. For several years, the disease was thought to be under control, but with the increasing number of people with compromised immune systems and the emergence of resistant bacterial strains, tuberculosis is once again on the rise. Myobacterium leprae causes leprosy, also known as Hansen's disease, which is characterized by disfiguring skin lesions and destructive effects on the respiratory tract. Leprosy is also a worldwide health problem. It is infectious when the myobacteria invade the skin or respiratory tract of susceptible myobacterium avium intracellulare, which causes myobacterium avium complex, MAC, is seen in patients with AIDS or in other patients who are severely immu immunocompromised. Rifobutin or, myobact or myo mycobutin which was developed as an anti-tuberculosis drug, is most effective against M. avium antracellulare. Anti-tuberculosis drugs. Anti-tuberculosis drugs. Tuberculosis can lead to serious damage in the lungs, the GU tract, bones, and the, men and the meninges. Because M. tuberculosis is so slow growing, the treatment must be continued for six to two years or six months to two years. Using the drugs in combination helps to decrease the emergence of resistant strains and to affect the bacteria at various phases during their long and slow life cycle, Table 9-8. First-line drugs for treating tuberculosis are used in combinations of two or more agents until bacterial conversion occurs or maximum improvement is seen. First-line drugs for treating tuberculosis are isoniazid or Nidrazid, rifampin or rifidin, pyrazinamide or that's the generic, uh, ethambutol or myobutol, and uh, streptomycin or which is gen generic, and rifapentine, priftin. If the patient cannot take one or more of the f first line drugs or if the disease continues to progress because of the emergence of resistant strain, 
second line drugs can be used. The second line drugs include athionamide, um, tricator SC, um, capriomycin or capistat, cyclosarin or ceramycin, and rifibutin, mycobutin. In addition, drugs with other antibiotic classes have been found to be effective in second-line treatments such as canamycin or cantrex, which is an aminoglycide, and ciprofloxacin, cipro, uh, ofla ofloxacin or floxin, and levofloxacin, leviquin, which are fluoroquinolones. Leprostatic drugs. The antibiotic used to treat leprosy is diapsone, generic, which has been the mainstay of leprosy treatment for many years. Although re resistant strains are emerging, Table 9-8, similar to the sulf sulfonamides, uh, dapsone inhibits folate synthesis in susceptible bacteria. In addition to its use in leprosy, dapsone is used to treat pneumocystis carinae pneumonia, pneumonia in AIDS patients and for a variety of infections caused by susceptible bacteria as well as for brown recluse spider bites. Recently the hypnotic drug thia, uh, thalidomide or thalamid was approved for use in condition that occurs after treatment for leprosy. Box 9-6. Therapeutic actions and indications. Most of the antimyobacterial agents act on the DNA and or RNA of the bacteria, leading to a lack of growth and eventually to bacterial death. See figure 9.2. Isonized or INH uh, specifically affects the mycolic acid coat around the bacterium. Although many of the antimycobacterial agents are effective against other species of susceptible bacteria, their primary indications are in the treatment of tuber tuberculosis or leprosy, as previously indicated. The anti-tuberculosis drugs are always used in combination to affect the bacteria as various stages at various stages and to help to decrease the emergence of resistant strains table 98 the antimyobacterial antimycobacterial agents are generally well absorbed from the GI tract these drugs given orally are metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine they cross the placenta and enter breast milk placing the fetus or child at risk for adverse reactions. Uh, pharmacokinetics. That was far. That was pharmacokinetics. And here's. Uh, nope. Then there's contraindications and cautions. Antimyobacterials are contraindicated for patients with any known allergy to these agents, and those with severe re renal or hepatic failure, which could interfere with metabolism. Excretion of the drug. Uh, okay, yeah. In those with severe case CNS dysfunction, which could be exasperated by the action of the drug, and pregnancy because of the possible adverse effects on the fetus, if an anti-tuberculosis regimen is necessary during pregnancy, combination of isoniazid, ethambuterol, and rifampin is considered the safe safest. Adverse effects. CNS effects such as neuritis, dizziness, headache, malaise, down, drowsiness, and hallucinations are often reported and are related to direct effects of the drugs on neurons. These drugs also are irritating to the GI tract, causing nausea, vomiting, anorexia, stomach upset, and abdominal pain. Rifampin, rifibutin, and rifapentin cause discoloration of body fluids. From urine to sweat and tears alert patients that in many instances orange tinged urine sweat and tears may stain clothing and permanently stain contact lenses this can be frightening if the patient is not alerted to the possibility that it will happen as with other antibiotics there is an always an, a possibility of hypersensitivity reactions 
monitor the patient on a regular basis. Clinically important drug-drug interactions. When rifampin and INH are used in combination, the possibility of toxic liver reactions increases. Patients should be monitored closely. Increased metabolism and decreased drug effectiveness occur as a result of administration of quinidine, met, met, metropropol, propanolol, corticosteroids, oral contraceptives, oral anticoagulants, oral antidiabetics agents, digoxin, theophylline, uh, methadone, fentoin, uh, phenytoin, phenytoin, uh, verapamil, cyclosporin, or ketoconazole in combination with rif rifampin or rifabutin. Patients who are taking these drugs combinations should be monitored closely and dose adjustments may made as needed. Assessment history and examination. Assess for possible contraindication caution, uh, known allergy to any antimicrobacterial drug, uh, history of renal hepatic disease, uh, history of CNS dysfunction, including seizure disorders and neuritis. Um, they could be exasperated. Pregnancy. Uh, ensure appropriate drug selection. Prevent adverse effects on fetus. Form a physical examination to establish baseline stats. Uh, examine skin for lesions. Obtain spe specimens and culture. Uh, evaluate CNS orientation. Uh, affect reflexes to establish a baseline monitor for adverse effects. Note respiratory status to provide a baseline for the occurrence of hypersensitivity reactions. Elevated renal level function tests, including bun and creatinine clearance, to assess the status of renal and liver functioning as so as to determine any needed alteration in dose. Nursing diagnosis related to drug therapy, uh, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirement related to GI effects, disturbed sensory perception, um, kinesthesia, or kinesthetic, related to CNS effects of the drug, acute pain related to GI effects of drug, efficient knowledge for recurring drug therapy. <sighs> Implementation with rationale. Um, looking for anything different here. Discontinue drug immediately if hypersensitivity reactions occur to avert potential serious reactions. Um, all pretty much the same there. Drink a lot of fluids to maintain nutrition. Use barrier contraceptives and understand that oral contraceptives may not be effective as uh, if antimycobacterials are being used. Understand that normally some of these drugs impart an orange stain to body fluids. If this occurs, the fluids may stain clothing and tears may stain contact lenses. Report difficulty breathing, hallucinations, numbness and tingling, worsening of condition, fever and chills, or changes in color of urine or stool. Evaluation monitor patient's response to drug, monitor for adverse effects, evaluate effectiveness of teaching plan, and monitor the effectiveness of comfort and safety measures. Key points. The myobacterial bacteria have an outer coat of mycolic acid that protects them from many disinfectants and allows them to survive for long periods in the environment. These slow-growing bacteria may need to be treated for several years before they can be eradicated. They cause tuberculosis and leprosy. Anti-tuberculosis drugs are used in combination to increase effectiveness and decrease the emergence of of resistant strains. These drugs are divided into first line and second line drugs. Adverse effects include rashes, an orange tint of body fluids, and GI reaction. Dapsone is the only antibiotic now used to treat leprosy. Thalidomide recently was reintroduced to treat an unusual reaction many patients develop after being on Dapsone. Other antibiotics. All right, other antibiotics. There are other antibiotics that do not fit into the large antibiotic classes. These drugs, the ketolides, lincosamides, macrolides, and monobactams, 
work in unique ways and are effective against specific bacteria. Table 9 9. Ketolides. The ketolides class of antibiotics was first introduced in 2004. At this time, telethromycin or Ketec is the only approved drug in this class. Therapeutic actions and indications the ketolides block protein synthesis within susceptible bacteria leading to cell death, which make them structurally related to the macrolide antibiotics. See later discussion on macrolides. Uh, telethromsin binds to specific ribosome subunits leading to cell death in susceptible bacteria, which includes several strains resistant to other antibiotic. Uh, telethromsin, telethromycin is effective against Esnemonae, including certain multidrug resistant strains, H. influenza, M. ketorahalis, Chlamydophila pneumonae, and Mycoplasm pneumonae. It is only approved for use in treating mild to moderate community acquired pneumonia. See Table 99. Uh, our pharmacokinetics tele telithomycin is. Available as an oral drug only, it is rapidly absorbed through the GI tract, reaching peak levels in one hour. The drug is widely distributed, may cross the placenta, and does pass into breast milk. It is metabolized in the liver with half-life 10 hours. It is excreted in the urine and feces. Contras and, and cautions. Tele telithromycin is contraindicated with known allergy to any component of the drug or to macrolide antibiotics to avoid hypersensitivity reactions with known congenital prolonged QT interval, bradycardia, or any proarrhythmic conditions such as hypokalemia to avoid potential serious uh, cardiac effects. With concurrent use of pemazide, cardiac or antiarrhythmics, simvastin, sim, or simvastatin, uh, atorvastin, or atorvastatin, or lovastatin, uh, because of the risk of serious adverse effects if these are combined and with myasthenia gravis, which is a black box warning with this drug because of the risk of potentially fatal respiratory failure. Use with caution in cases of renal or hepatic impairment because this could alter their metabolism and excretion of the drug, leading to serious adverse effects. Use with caution with pregnant lactating patients because of the potential for toxic effects on the fetus or infant, perform culture and sensitivity testing to ensure that the drug is used appropriately. Adverse effects. The adverse effects associated with tylithoromycin are largely secondary to toxic effects in the GI tract, nausea, vomiting, taste alteration, and the potential for pseudomembranous colitis. Super infections are common related to the loss of normal flora bacteria. Serious hypersensitivity reactions, including anaphylaxis, have occurred. Clinically important drug drug interactions there is a risk of increased serum levels uh, of telethromycin and Potentially serious set adverse effects if it is combined with pemazide, simvastatin, lovastatin, or storvastatin, or atorvastatin. That's it. These combinations should be avoided. There is risk of increased serum levels of digoxin and met metapropyl um, if they are combined with telithromycin. If this combination is used, the patient should be monitored closely and dose adjustments made. There is a risk of decreased serum levels of te telethromycin and loss of therapeutic effects if it is taken with rifampin, phenytoin, uh, carbamazepine, or phenobarbital. If these drugs are needed, a different antibiotic should be used. Uh, increased GI toxicity associated with theophylline can occur if the two drugs are used together. Separate 
Separate the doses by at least one hour if both drugs are needed. Lincocymides. The lincocymides, table 99, are similar to the macrolides, but are more toxic. These drugs include clindamycin, or cleoxin, and lincomycin, or lincosin. The therapeutic action and indications. The lincomycin, the lincos, the links, lincosamides react at almost the same site in bacterial protein synthesis and are effective against the same strain of bacteria. Uh, these drugs are used in the treatment of severe infections when a less toxic antibiotic cannot be used. Pharmacokinetics. The lincosamide, lincosamides are rapidly absorbed from the GI tract or from the IM injections and are metabolized in the liver and excreted in the urine and feces. These drugs cross the placenta and enter the breast milk to see contraindications. Clindamycin has a half-life of two to three hours. It is available in parenteral form and oral forms as well as topical and vaginal forms for the treatment of local infection. Lincomycin has a half-life of five hours. It can be given orally IM IV. Use lincomycin with caution in patients with hepatic or renal, renal impairment, which could interfere with the metabol metabolism and excretion of the drug used during pregnancy and a lactation only if the benefit clearly outweighs the risk of the fetus or the neonate. Severe geo GI reactions, including fatal pseudomembranous colitis, have occurred, limiting the uh, usefulness of lincosamides. Uh, however, for a serious infection caused by a susceptible bacterium, a lincosamide may be the drug of choice. Some other toxic effects that limit usefulness are pain, skin infections, and bone marrow depression. Macrolides. The macrolides are antibiotics that interfere with protein synthesis and susceptible bacteria. Macrolides uh, include erythromycin or eritab, eric, and others. Uh, as azithromycin, um, zithromax, and clarithromycin, um, biaxin, and dirithromycin, dynabac. Therapeutic actions and indications: the macrolides, which may be bactericidal or bacteriostatic, exert their effect by binding to the bacterial cell membrane and changing protein function. Figure nine one. This action can prevent the cell from dividing and cause cell or cause cell death, depending on the sensitivity of the bacteria and the con concentration of the drug. Macrolides are indicated for treatment of the following condition. Acute infections caused by susceptible strains of S. pneumoniae, M. pneumoniae, Listeria monocytogenase, and Legionella nu pneumophila. Infections caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococci pelvic inflammatory disease caused by N. Gonorrheic upper respiratory tract infections caused by H. influenza with sulfanamides. Infections caused by corneobacterium dif diphtheria and corneobacterium menitis simum with antitoxin. Intestinal amoebiasis and infections caused by C. trachomatis. Um, See table 9.9 for usual indications for each of these agents. In addition, macrolides may be used as prophylaxis for endocarditis before dental procedures in patients with valvular heart disease who are allergic to penicillin. Topical macrolides are indicated for the treatment of ocular infections caused by susceptible organisms and for acne vulgaris, and they may also be used prophylactically against infection in minor skin abrasions and for treatment of skin infections used by sensitive organisms. Pharmacokinetics, the macrolides are widely distributed throughout the body. They cross the placenta and enter the breast milk, see contraindications. Uh, see drugs, or these drugs are absorbed in the GI tract. Erythromycin is metabolized in the liver uh, with excretion mainly in the bile to feces. The half-life of erythromycin is 1.6 hours. Azithromycin and clarithromycin are mainly excreted unchanged in the urine, making it necessary to monitor renal function when patients are taking these drugs. 
the half-life of azithromycin is 68 hours, making it useful for patients who have trouble remembering to take pills because it can be given once a day. The half-life of clarithromycin is 3 to 7 hours. Erythromycin is converted from the prodrug dirithromycin to erythromycliamine in the intestinal, intestinal wall. Most of the drug is excreted through the feces. It is, has a half-life half of 2 to 36 hours. It also has the advantage of a once-day dosing, which increases compliance in many cases. Contras and cautions, macrolides are contraindicated to in patients with unknown allergy to any macrolide because cross-sensitivity occurs. Ocular preparations are contraindicated for viral, fungal, or myobacterial infection of the eye, which could be exasperated by loss of bacterial bacteria of the normal flora. Use with caution in patients with hepatic dysfunction, which could alter the metabolism of the drug, and those with renal diseases, could, which could interfere with the excretion of some of the drug. You also use with caution in lactating women because macrolides secreted in the breast milk can cause diarrhea and superinfections in the infant and in pregnant women because of potential adverse effects on the developing fetus. Use only if the benefit clearly outweighs the risk of the fetus or the infant. Uh, adverse effects. Relatively few adverse effects are associated with macrolides. The most frequent one, which involves the direct effects of the drug on the GI tract, are often uncomfortable enough to limit the use of the drug. These include abdominal cramping, anorexia, diarrhea, vomiting, and pseudomembranous colitis. Other effects include neurological symptoms such as confusion, abnormal thinking, and uncontrollable emotions, which could be related to drug effects on the CNS membranes. Hypersensitivity reactions are ranging from rash to anaphylaxis, and superinfections related to the loss of normal flora. Clinically important drug interactions increase serum levels of digoxin occur when digoxin is taken concurrently with macrolides. Uh, patients who receive both drugs should have their digoxin levels uh, monitored and dose adjusted during and after treatment with the macrolide. In addition, when oral anticoagulants, theophylins, carbamazepine, or corticosteroids are administered concurrently with macrolides, the effects of these drugs reportedly increase as a result of metabolic changes in the liver. Uh, patients who take any of these combinations may require reduced dose of the particular drug and careful monitoring. When Cycloserine is taken with macrolides. Increased serum levels of cycloserine have occurred with a resultant risk of renal toxicity. The combination should be avoided if at all possible. Clinically important drug food interactions with macrolides. Uh, food in the stomach decreases absorption of the oral macrolide, therefore the antibiotic should be taken on an empty stomach. The full 8 ounce glass of water one hour before or at least two to three hours after meals. Okay, monobactam antibiotic. The only monobactam antibiotic currently available for use is Azetronam or Azectam. Therapeutic actions and indications among the antibiotics as it as treonam's structure is unique and little cross resistance occurs, it is effective against gram negative enterobacteria and has no effect on gram positive or anaerobic bacteria. As treonam distributes or disrupts bacterial cell wall synthesis, which promotes leakage of cellular ca contents and cell death in susceptible bacteria, the drug is indicated for the treatment of urinary tract, skin, in intra abdominal and gynecological infections, as well as septicemia caused by susceptible bacteria, including E. coli, Enterobacter, uh, Serratia, Proteus, Salmonella, Providentia, Pseudomonas, Citrobacter, Hemimorphalus, Neisseria, and Klebsilla. Pharmacokinetics, Astrionam as is available for IV and IM use only and reaches a peak effect levels in 1 to five, one to 1.5 hours. Its half-life is 1.5 to, to 2 hours. The drug is ex excreted unchanged in the urine, crosses the placenta, and enters breast milk. Contras and cautions, Ashtreonam is contraindicated with any known allergy. Uh, use uh, with caution in patients with a history of acute allergic reaction to penicillins 
or cephalosporins because of the possibility of cross-reactivity -re in those with renal or hepatic dysfunction and pregnant lactating. Adverse uh, effects associated with the use of estreonam uh, rel relatively mild local GI effects uh, include nausea, GI upset, vomiting and diarrhea, hepatic enzyme elevations related to direct drug effects on the liver may also occur. Other effects include inflammation, phlebitis, and discomfort at injection sites as well as the potential for allergic reaction including anaphylaxis. Clinically important drug interactions. Estranim is incompatible in solution with nephcillin, ceftriodine, and metronidazole. Nursing considerations for patients receiving other antibiotics. <clears throat> Assess for possible contraindications, known allergy to ketolides, lincosamides, macrolides, or manobactums, obtain specific information, liver history, yep, metabolism, pregnancy, lactation, form physical assessment. Um, looking for anything out of the ordinary, assess skin, obtain specimens, monitor temperature, conduct assessment of orientation, assess liver and renal function, obtain baseline electrocardiogram to rule out conditions that could put the patient at risk of serious arrhythmias. Nursing diagnosis is related to drug therapy might include the following. Acute pain related to GI or CNS effects of the drug, risk for infection related to potential for super, super infections, deficient knowledge regarding drug therapy. Uh, implementation rationale, check culture, monitor hepatic and renal, Ensure patient receives full course of medication. Ensure the patient swallows a tablet whole. It should not be cut, crushed, or chewed to ensure therapeutic dose of the drug. Monitor the site for infection. Um, arrange to continue drug therapy for two days after. Um, provide small frequent meals. Um, ensure ready access to bathroom facilities to assist patient with problems associated with diarrhea. Uh, institute safety measures, do, 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 instruct the patient after appropriate dosage reg regimen and possible adverse effects to enhance patient knowledge about drug therapy and to promote compliance for the monobactam agent as trionam. This drug can be given only IV or IM so the patient will not be responsible for administering the drug. For lincosamides, take additional precautions that include careful monitoring of GI activity and fluid balance and stopping the drug at the first sign of se severe or bloody diarrhea. Um, take safety precautions uh, or the, um, having to do with orth orthostatic hypertension, uh, drink a lot of fluids, difficulty breathing, severe headache, diarrhea, skin rash, mouth, or vaginal sores. Uh, evaluation, monitor patient response to drug, monitor for adverse effects, evaluate effectiveness of teaching, monitor the effectiveness of comfort and safety measures, and compliance. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, key points, ke ketolides pro block protein synthesis and susceptible bacteria leading to cell death. Telithromycin is the only ketolide currently available. It is used to treat community acquired pneumonia. Monitor the patient for nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and CNS effects, including dizziness and headache. Lincosamides are similar to macrolides, but are more toxic. They are used to treat severe infection. Monitor for patient. Monitor the patient for pseudomembranous colitis, bone marrow suppression, pain, and CNS effects. Macrolides are in a class of older antibiotics that can be bactericidal or bacteriostatic. They are used to treat URIs and UTIs and are used often used when patients are allergic to penicillin. Monitor the patient for nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, and other CNS effects. The monobactam antibiotic Astrianam is effective against only gram-negative enterobacteria. It is safely used when patients are allergic to penicillin or cephalosporins. Monitor the patient taking astrionam for GI problems, liver toxicity, and pain at the injection site. Research is constantly being done to develop new antibiotics to affect emergent resistant strains. Oh, yep. I guess this is the conclusion. Exciting. 
Result, research is constantly being done to develop new antibiotics to affect the emerging, emerging resistant strains of bacteria. New classes of antibiotics are daptomycin, cubic, cubicin, linozolid, or zyvox, tigocycline, or tigacil, and quinupristin and dalfopristin, also av available only in combinations form called synersid. See the following for additional information about each of these agents. Adjuncts to antibiotic therapy include clavulanic acid and solbactam, see box 92, and thialamide, or thalidomide. Daptomycin was introduced in the fall of 2003 as a cyclic lipopeptide antibiotic. This class of drug binds to bacterial cell membranes, causing a rapid depolarization of membrane potential. The loss of membrane potential leads to the inhibition of protein and DNA and RNA synthesis, which results in bacterial cell death. Daptomycin is approved for treating complicated skin and skin structure infections caused by susceptible gram-positive bacteria, including methicilline, methic methicillin, resistant strains of S. aureus. It must, it must be given IV over 30 minutes, once each day for 7 to 14 days, which makes its use inconvenient. Patients should be monitored for pseudomembranous colitis and myopathies. Myopathies. Hmm. Uh, Linezolid, or Zyvox, was introduced in 2000. This drug is indicated specifically for treatment of infection caused by vancomycin resistant and methicillin-resistant uh, strains of bacteria. It is available in intravenous and oral forms. The usual adult dose is 600 milligrams PO. It may be administered IV Q12H for 10 to 14 days. This drug must also be used cautiously and only when sensitive bacterial species have been clearly identified. It is the first oral drug approved for the treatment of diabetic foot ulcers. These drugs are part of a wide variety of compounds that are being investigated to deal with the increasing problem of resistant bacteria. Tigacycline, approved by the FDA in 2005, was the first drug to of a new class of antibiotics called glycocyclines. These antibiotic inhibit antibiotic in, inhibit antibiotic inhibits protein um, translation on ribosomes of certain bacteria, leading to the inability to maintain their integrity and culminating in the death of the bacterium. It is improved for their use in the treatment of complicated skin and skin structures. Key points, ketolids, ketolides block protein synthesis and susceptible bacteria leading to cell death. Telithromycin is the only ketolid currently available. It is used to treat community. Oh, wait, we already went over that. Okay. I'm just going to go to the chapter summary. Antibiotics work by disrupting protein or enzyme systems within a bacterium, causing cell death, bacterial cytal, or preventing multiplication bacteriostatic. The proteins or enzymes systems affected by antibiotics are more likely to be found or used in bacteria than in human cells. The primary therapeutic use of each antibiotic is determined by the bacterial species that are sensitive to that drug, the clinical condition of the patient receiving the drug, and the benefit to risk ratio for the patient. The longer an antibiotic has been available, the more likely it is that mutant bacterial strains resistant to the mechanisms of antibiotic activity will have developed. The most common adverse effects of antibiotic therapy involve the GI tract, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, abdominal pain, and superinfections, invasion of the body by normally occurring microorganisms that are usually kept in check by normal flora. To prevent or contain the growing threat of drug-resistant strains of bacteria, it is important to use antibiotics cautiously to com complete the full course of antibiotic prescription and to avoid saving antibiotics for self-medication in the future. A patient and family teaching program should address these issues as well as the proper dosing procedure for the drug. Even if the patient feels better and the importance of keeping a record and the importance of keeping a record of any reactions to antibiotics. Uh, 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 that's it. Chapter 9, Karch. 
antibiotic drugs.